All right. Welcome to the advanced animation tutorial. Due to requests, I'm now going to teach you how to set up and use a full body animation rig. Now before I begin, let me just state that this is my method on how I do this sort of animation. So with that being said, my method is like stupidly complex at times. So this ride will be a bumpy one. So stick with it and you guys will pull through. Setting up in general is pretty easy, but it's a part in animation that becomes really tedious. I'm just going to jump right into this and begin with the arm. What we're going to be doing with this is dividing it up into three different areas. The shoulder, the forearm, and the hand. Now with the arm layer selected, go up and grab the pen tool and start drawing out the shoulder. This piece will show the top of the shoulder as well as where the elbow begins. Now to get the forearm, you're going to want to duplicate the arm layer by hitting either Command or Control D on your keyboard, deleting the mask, and cutting out the forearm. So that will be from the bottom of the shoulder to the top of the hand. Lastly for the hand, it's the same process. Duplicate, delete mask, and redraw. Tip before I continue. In the Timelines palette, if you have a layer selected and you hit enter on your keyboard, you can rename the layer. So you may want to do that just so you can reduce confusion later on. In order for the arm to bend properly, we're going to need to edit the anchor points to each and every individual limb. The tool for this is the Pan Behind tool. With this tool selected, we'll be able to edit the anchor points for any given layer. Just select the layer and then move the little target to the area in which you want the arm to bend. Now the final step to completing the arm is just to parent everything together. So to do that, you just click and drag these small swirls and then connect them to other layers. In our case, you're going to want to connect the hand to the forearm and the forearm to the shoulder. And to get the second arm, what you're going to want to do is duplicate the layers to the first arm, put it at the bottom of the timeline, and move it over to the other side of the body. Now if you go up and play around with the rotations, you'll see you have a working arm. The next step before we start animating this character is we need to give him a pair of usable legs. How are we going to do that? Basically we're just going to use the same technique that we use with the arms, but with the legs. In this case, we have a sprite that has his legs connected to his body. So we'll need to disattach the legs from the torso. The pieces that you'll be cutting up are the upper leg, the lower leg, and the foot. So select the layer, turn on the pen tool, pick a leg, and start cutting. Now at this point, we're just repeating what we did with the arm. Duplicate, delete mask, and redraw. So now you have your left leg fully done, but you need to get the right one now. Sadly with this, it's not like the arm where we can just duplicate and throw it over. You're gonna have to remask the right leg of your character. So duplicate, delete mask, and redraw. Once you're finished, all you have left to do is fix up the anchor points and parent. Just like the arms, you move the anchor points to where you want the limbs to bend. So things like knees and top of feet. And with the parenting, it's foot to lower leg and lower leg to upper leg. Also to mention, you do not parent any of the legs to the torso, because that then looks like this. This is exactly what you don't want.
So now our character is finished. He's able to bend his arms, he's able to bend his legs, and he's already starting to look less static. So now comes the fun part. It's time to make our character walk. Okay, before I begin, I should bring to your attention that you now have roughly 15 layers that you have to keep track of in this composition. If you want to keep track of them a little bit better, by clicking the small blue box to the left, you're able to recolor layers so you can figure out what's what without having to read the names. Before we start, let's just solo the legs. We're going to be editing the rotation to the two upper leg pieces. Select them both. Hit R on your keyboard, and then place the keyframe down where you want the walking to begin. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to do it at the beginning. The way we do these two pieces are what's going to drive the whole animation. Now with your initial keyframe already placed on the timeline, scrub forward a bit to where you want the walking to begin. The way I'm going to set mine up is that every 10 frames, he'll switch his legs. How you'll be doing this is by bringing the playhead to where you want the first step to begin, and then just using the rotation tool to rotate the legs. As you do this, you'll see that the playhead is making automatic keyframes. So to speed things up, just do two rotations and then copy and paste keyframes. For this tutorial, I'm going to have him walk four steps. So right now our legs are looking pretty good, however now we need to add in the swinging motion of the knees. So bring the playhead to the beginning of the timeline, and expand the rotations to both of the lower legs. You're going to want to begin with the leg that swings forward first, so in this case we're working with the right leg. How walking works is that when a leg swings forward, the knee will always bend back, and then realign itself the moment before the foot hits the ground. This is done with only three keyframes. So back in the timeline, put a keyframe down before the leg begins its swing. Since this is the first swing, we don't want to exaggerate it. So while the leg is halfway through its swing, angle the knee towards the ground. When the leg gets to the end of its rotation, straighten the knee. Now with one swing already down, just copy and paste those keyframes to when the leg swings forward again. Just this time, you're able to make the knee bend backwards even more, since the leg is doing a further swing. Now with the right leg done, let's go on to the left. Like we did with the left leg, you only animate the part of the leg that's swinging forward. And like we did with the left leg, it's the same kind of animation, just without the subtle first step. Now that the legs are finished, we can move on to the arms. How are you going to animate the arms? You'll be editing the rotation on the top shoulder pieces on the arms. When rotating the arms, always keep in mind that the arm is always opposite to the rotation of the leg it's above. As you can see, the left leg and the left arm are always pointing in opposite directions. Same goes for the right arm and the right leg. And the speed of the rotation is determined by the speed in which the legs are rotating at. So in my case, every 10 frames, the arm switch with the legs. Now for added detail, we're going to add in the swinging motion of the forearm, just to give the arms a little more flop, or dolphin-esque. If you bring up the rotation to the forearms, we're just redoing the same steps that we did with the knees. So in between keyframes, 
rotate the arm slightly, and then reset the keyframes back. Now if you want to add rotation to the torso and the head, instead of doing hand frame keyframe animation, we're going to be using a wiggle expression. If you click the stopwatch while holding alt, it'll bring up the expressions editor. In this space, we're going to type in wiggle bracket 1 comma 3, closing bracket. What this expression does is that it will randomly move any parameter that it is placed on. That goes for opacity, rotation, scale, position, anchor points, Essentially anything that has a stopwatch beside it. And back to our character, you're going to want to apply this expression to the torso, to the head, and to the shoulders. Doing so will give the applied body parts subtle movements. Now with your character fully keyframed up, all your keyframes are probably linear keyframes. If you guys remember from my last tutorial, we'll be switching these to ease keyframes. So highlight all of your keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard. This will convert all your keys into eased keyframes. So now instead of this, you have this. What does this mean? It means that all your keys now ease in and out of each other, so your walking animation now looks smoother. Now that we're finished with everything in this composition, now we can actually have the character walk across the screen in a scene. So in regards to actually moving the character around the scene, we're not actually going to be using this composition. Instead, you'll be moving your character in the composition that has your scene. Go over into the project panel and drag in the composition that has your character. In this case, mine is named Denzel. As you can see, the character is filling up most of the screen, so we're going to bring down his scale to his proper size. Now we're going to drag the character to his initial starting point. Now you're going to want to figure out where your character's walking cycle begins. In my case, it's at the beginning of the timeline. So place the keyframe down on position whenever your character begins to walk. Next you're going to scrub forward in the timeline to where your character stops walking. Drag your character forward how many steps they take and place the second keyframe. Now with the beginning and an end, all we need to do now is ease those keyframes. And at this point, you have successfully made your character walk from one part of the screen to the next. Congratulations, you have successfully finished the walking tutorial. Ha, <laughs> that only took almost 14 minutes. So there you have it, how I do walking animation. I hope this tutorial helped. If not, then you, ha then you can ask some questions. That's cool. Um, if you guys have any tutorial requests, please let me know. I'm cool with teaching you guys stuff. So this is the end of the video. Um, you can click one of the two links that are up there. Probably gonna link back to, like, you know, I don't know, definition of insanity and that bacon raining one. It's a pretty cool video, I guess. You can watch those again. Um, you're still here. Okay, um... All this music is by Renard, by the way, or Kitsune Squared, if you so happen to like him. All the music's in the description, yone. The description, yone. The scrush. Scrub, scrub.